Alex here with a video on high conflict child custody. The topic is going to be the abuser's double bind. So um, basically, I wanted to cover this video because it actually came up quite a few times in my own court case. It came to my attention by um, one of my viewers who contacted me and mentioned uh, a situation. Well, first off, he mentioned that um, he started out with supervised visits and like nine months later went to court and now he has uh, visitation with his child like three days a week so he mentioned that my videos helped him through that process I'm not sure to what extent that it helped him because I do recall him having an attorney but anyway one of the questions he asked me was a double bind situation um, before I go into some of the um, ways to deal with the situations I'll just go into his example so he told me he said Alex I have a situation I want to go to my son's um, doctor appointment but I'm afraid if I go she's gonna say I'm harassing her or stalking her something along those lines and I, you know, I asked him, why, well, you know, why are you afraid of that? And well, he said, because she's done that already. She says I'm harassing and stalking her all the time, and it comes up in court. And so I said, well, you know what? You're in a double bind situation because if you don't go, actually, he was the one that characterized. He used that phrase, so I'm using that phrase too now. Anyway, um, I said you're in a double bind situation because if you don't go, she's just going to say you don't care about your kid. So you can either go and she'll accuse you of harassing her, or you can not go, and then she'll tell the court that you don't care about your kid and you go you don't go to his appointments. And he it was a, it was an eye opener for him, and I believe um, he decided he was going to go to his kid's appointments just based on that. But um, what kind of got my attention was why was it such an eye opener? Because to me it was so clear that you're in a double bind. It's obvious. <clears throat> but when I thought back to the beginning of my case, I remember being frustrated by this stuff too, and I didn't know what to do either. So. Um, I have sort of four steps um, here um, that I sort of internalized going through my own custody case, going through these double line situations that I wanted to bring up. Hopefully it helps people out. The first step is identify the um, situation as a double bind situation. Sometimes you're not even really thinking about what's going on and you're getting manipulated. Um, just like he was. He wasn't really thinking about the fact that she was just going to accuse him of not caring about his kid. He was so focused on the um, the harassment accusations that he didn't, he didn't even think of the possibility that by not going, she was going to say he didn't even care about his kid. And that's why he didn't go to appointments. So the um, first thing you need to do is identify the situation as a double bind. You need to tell yourself, you know, uh, if I take this step, um, can they still find some way to paint me in a negative light? And if they can, you know, you need to move on to step two. Step two is, if you're in a double bind, identify the dominant scenario and the submissive scenario. The dominant scenario is typically the one that is going to put you into the conflict situation that you're trying to avoid. This is the one the abuser is steer steering you away from. The submissive scenario is the one that's either going to It'll get you out of the situation and you'll still get accused of something negative in court. Or, it'll get you out of the situation, you won't get accused of something negative in court, but your child will suffer. The child will suffer the consequences. I'm going to go over a few examples of how some of these things turned out in my case, and you'll see an example of each situation. One where, by not complying, I end up getting painted negatively in court, and the other where, by not complying, my son would have suffered. Um, <clears throat> Step three is, now, after you've identified the dominant and submissive scenario, um, identify whether or not you can preempt the scenario. So basically, take one action and cut, cut them off from using that against you. Um, or if you can't preempt, at the very least, postempt it, um, which I'll go into again when I go into some of my examples. Basically, you're just going to have to let yourself get attacked. And then when you go to court, apply a solution. Apply a legal solution that prevents it from happening ever again. Uh, cuts them off at the knees. Um, it, it, you just, there's, there's ways to do this. Again, I'll cover it in some of my examples. Uh, the fourth is once you pick a scenario, if that double bind ever comes up again in the future, stay consistent. So, I mean, hopefully you're taking the dominant scenario, but... Um, if you don't and you and you just choose to back off in that particular case, it can really um, work against you in the future if you kind of go back and forth between them. Uh, it, it just it, it it's better it's easier in court to protect yourself if you articulate a reason as to why you went the way you did, and then you can say with confidence that you kept doing that because it's hard to say, you know, Your Honor, I know that this looks bad, uh, but here's why I did this when. The next 10 times down the line, you went back and forth and did different things each time. So 
I'll go into the first scenario. Um, this one is, I was going on a um, vacation. And I, I think I was going to be gone two weeks or a week and a half, something like that. And so my concern was we're in the middle of, you know, all this court conflict. Um, if I don't offer, you know, to let her watch him while I'm gone for that long, she's going to paint me in a negative light, which is basically, you know, he put our kid with the sitter when I could have watched him for all that time. Well, I didn't know that this was a double bind, but I found out later because when I sent her an email saying, hey, I'm going to go on this uh, vacation um, if you want, you can watch him. She said, sure, I'll watch him. And then as soon as court came up, she said, Your Honor, he went on a vacation and dumped our son on me. She made it look like I just didn't care about him, had no plans at all to for anything. And that I said, um, hey, I'm going on a vacation. Here you go. I didn't even give her the choice. That's what she made it look like. Um, this is a double bind situation that I failed to identify. And it sucks because had I identified it, I would have been able to see that there was a way to preempt it. And I did in the future apply a preemption to this um, this double bind situation. Next time I went on a, a vacation, this time it was for my um, honeymoon with my wife, I remembered the first time that this happened to me and I sent her an email and I, instead of saying what I said last time, I said, um, I'm going on a vacation for two weeks. I have a sitter lined up. He's taken care of. But if you want to watch him, um, you can watch him instead. And the funny thing is, when I sent her that one, she said, nah, I don't want to watch him. So, I mean, it was once she couldn't use that situation as a weapon, she actually didn't want to watch him. Whereas last time, she did it because it was an opportunity that she could exploit. So, that's an example of um, a situation where I failed to identify the double bind, came back to bite me a little bit. Honestly, the judge didn't really put that much weight behind her accusation. I was able to explain, you know, myself, and he believed me. But the thing is, you waste time. I mean, it's just... It's better to preempt it, cut it off, and it not come up than to let them bring this nonsense up and then the court's time gets chewed up having to deal with an inane issue that should have never been an issue that they just created out of thin air because they wanted there to be issues in court. So I'll go on to the next one. This um, was a situ... Oh, I remember this one. Sometimes even when you preempt it, they still go crazy. So this on this one... The court had ordered that she was allowed to talk to him at 5.30 every day one time. And so she would call at 5.30 p.m., which was consistent with the court's order. Sometimes our son would be outside playing. And I would say, hey, he's outside playing, but I'll go take the phone to him. And I took the phone to him and he talked to him. Anyway, this was only sometimes. He wasn't outside all the time. One time, um, she, said, she, she said to me, um, she sent me a message, I believe, saying, I don't like how he's always outside when I talk to him because he's rushed. Can I please talk to him at 7.30, right before bed? And I thought to myself, you know, I could put my foot down. But this is an opportunity to, um, you know, you know, be, to show that I'm, I'm con uh, the parent most likely to facilitate contact with the other parent, to show that I'm the cooperative parent, to show that I'm not the one that's vindictive. Um, and that's basically what I was trying to avoid. Well, there, there was a double bind there, because the, the other end of that bind is um, she could say I'm in contempt of court, which is obviously nuts, because the only reason that I'm doing that is because she asked me. And that's what I mentioned, that's what I meant by earlier, when sometimes you can preempt an issue and they'll just still bring it up anyway, no matter how insane it sounds. So that's what happened. I didn't see it coming. Um, I, I let her talk to him at 7.30 the next day. She, hang, she hung up after talking to him, had a nice conversation. She sent me an email saying, you're in contempt of court for not letting me talk to him at 5.30. And I'm like, how do you think that would go anywhere? When I have messages of you saying, I don't like that he's outside with his friends. Please call me at 7.30. It just shows you, even when you are able to preempt or postempt an issue, even when you do identify the two scenarios and choose the right one, even though it's insane for them to say that you are for some somehow a bad person, they'll still say it sometimes. So I mean, you just have to really have a lot of metal when you're um, you know facing these double bind situations. When you're dealing with the personality disordered abuser, especially because they are so obsessed with making the conclusions that they've concocted in their head true, that even they'll sound crazy. And when it happens, you just have to stay the course. Don't let it rattle you. Don't tell yourself, oh, I was wrong. Next time I'm going to do the other thing. 
just stay the course, stay consistent. Um, anyway, going forward, I was I, I basically said, all right, if that's what you're gonna if if that's what you're gonna say, then you're gonna just have to talk to him at five thirty um, every day since that's that's what you want. I guess you forgot that you asked to talk to him at seven thirty. Here it is in writing an email from you yesterday. Then fine, that's what we'll do. And of course, once I said that, I stayed consistent from then on. Um, if she ever asked to talk to him at a different time, I said no. And you just have you just have to stay consistent because when it comes up in court and she accuses you and you say, Your Honor, last time I did that, she said it was in contempt of court. Here's the email from her. From then on, I just stayed consistent and chose this option. It just sounds better than if you tell the court, Well, I know, sometimes I did that, sometimes I did this, I didn't know what she wanted. You just sound a little bit more um, level-headed when you can articulate your the conflict, your solution to the conflict, and that you consistently stuck to that solution. Um, there's a couple other examples that I had. Um, I believe, oh, the doctor's office. Oh, that was a real double bind. So, in this situation, the problem was that she was accusing me of um, like harassment and stalking. And so, my fear was if I go to these appointments, she's going to accuse me of it again. And this one, actually, I did identify as a double bind. And this is actually also consistent with um, a viewer that came to me and um, asked me a question regarding pretty much the same exact scenario. I identified the double bind. Because I realized right then and there, yeah, she's going to accuse me of harassing or stalking, but if I don't go to this doctor's appointment, she's just going to accuse me of uh, being an uncaring parent. You know, I didn't care enough to go to his appointments. And so I, the, both situations are really bad. The submissive one in this case is not going to the appointment because basically um, you're staying away and you're letting them control everything. Um, you're still going to get painted in a negative light because that's just what they're going to do. But it's not what's best for your kid. Um, the other is the dominant situation is just going and being there for your child and then um, obviously, they'll say you're harassing or stalking, or, or they're saying they'll say you're, you're showing them angry faces or something in court, something like that. Um, this was a situation where I chose. I don't know if anyone's heard any of my previous videos or viewed them, but um, this the medical appointments issue was a very contentious issue for me. I ended up going back to court three different times on three different motions because she just would do everything in her power to frustrate my ability to go to appointments. And it did end up factoring into the modification of physical custody. So in the end, it did come back to bite her in the rear. But anyway, this is a situation that was a double bind. I chose the dominant scenario, and I really couldn't preempt it. There was no way for me to preempt that. I did have ways to post-empt it. So I would, you know, when I went to the appointment and it, and it blew up into a conflict, I was able to go back to court and use that situation. I was able to say, hey, we went to this appointment. She's accusing me of all these things. There's all this conflict at the appointment, Your Honor. I'm really simplifying this because there were so many different situations. There was at least three times that I went back to court, but there were several incidents in and of themselves, five or six of them. Anyway, I was able to use that to say, to ask the court to change the order. And so that's what I would recommend to um, anyone here in, in a situation like that, um, there's a couple of things you can do. The most extreme being you can ask for sole legal custody, and I did end up getting that in my case. Um, and then there's, of course, some a few things in the middle where you could ask the court to like give you sole legal custody on just doctor's appointments and give them sole legal custodies on educational appointments. So that way, um, there's no conflict, even though both sides are losing some of their parental rights, at the very least, they um, both have some kind of parental rights because as I mentioned in my previous video um, in a situation where you have that bad of an abusive parent you end up really having no rights at all because they, they'll punish you for, for fighting with them for showing up and asserting your rights they'll punish you they'll cause conflicts they'll accuse you of things and they'll embarrass your child in front of everyone and so you end up having no rights even though you have rights on paper they end up depriving you by you know using those kinds of actions so it sucks to have to split your legal custodial rights like that but at the very least you have something that you can go to and be a part of and then there's a, an even more soft court approach where you can ask the court to let you alternate appointments so uh, basically one of you sets an appointment and they go to that appointment and then the next time around the other person sets an appointment and they go to that appointment 
So that's another situation where, or that's the first one that I brought up where you really can't preempt it. You have to just let the shit hit the fan and then post-empt it. Don't just let it keep happening because it can get worse and worse and worse. Um, that was one of the mistakes that I wish I would have addressed more aggressively earlier on. And I really let that one drag on. I mean, I, I went back to court, but I kept asking for slight baby steps to prevent it. And it really just got worse and worse. And I should have just asked straight away, um, the conflict is way too much. I need sole legal custody. This is out of control. And I did end up getting sole legal custody, but that was like six years after I instituted child custody proceedings. And for all that time, it was just a really bad situation for our son. Um, you know, a lot of times, this is, um, oh, I remember the fourth situation now. The last double bind was the situation where she didn't want him to get uh, the surgery on his teeth. And this was a different type of double, uh, double bind. This is a situation where the negative consequence, me giving in, or the submissive scenario, by me just agreeing and letting the appointments be canceled and not giving him a surgery, she really can't paint me in a negative light because she's pushing so hard to cancel the appointments. There's just so much. I mean, it's her. She's the one that wants to do that. So I'm not, there's no way she can really use that against me. But the, there's harm to your kid. So yeah, you're not going to be going to court and being portrayed in a negative light, but your child suffers because they're going through pain in their mouth because they need four, uh, five crowns and two extractions. So sometimes I call that hostage taking. We're not going to do a separate video on it because I'm pretty sure everyone knows. Anyone who's in a situation like this, they know what's going on. Um, your, your child's being taken hostage because the uh, other parent doesn't care if your child is hurt. And they love the fact that you suffer when their child when the child suffers. So, I mean, it's, it's a clear hostage taking situation in this case. There's probably a, a bunch of other examples. Um, people can think of that involve that kind of uh, situation. A couple off the top of my head were um, there's one where I took our where I didn't take our son to a, a, a tr orientation, like a school orientation, and she showed up and she started making a big scene about the fact that I didn't take him, and that was one that could have been um, a hostage taking situation because um, had I brought him, I wouldn't have been able to just walk away. Since I didn't bring him, and she, once she started yelling you know, and making a scene. I, I didn't have our son there. I just turned and left. She couldn't do anything about it. But had I brought him, it's a lot harder to do that because they'll they'll usually involve your child in the whole obnoxious yelling, causing a scene type thing situation. And it, I mean, you can't, we can do pick up your kid and run. You look like a crazy parent. Uh, or if they go, reach down and hug and won't let go, or s straight up just pick your kid up and walk off, even though it's your visitation. Some some people have told me about that. It's it's hostage shaking because they get what they want using your um, love of your child. They know you're not going to fight them because they know number one you're not going to want to look crazy, and number two you're not going to want to hurt your child. Whereas they don't care. They don't care if your child suffers. They want what they want. They're going to get it. Um, come hell or high water. The other one was uh, a hostage sh uh, taking situation. Um, I mentioned the the stopping the surgery. Um, I mentioned that other example of stopping the surgery, but there was another way, another technique, I guess I could use that word, that she stopped a different surgery with him, a whole different surgery that she didn't want him to get. She, um, she was the same. She said the same thing. I don't want you to get it, and I went and scheduled it anyway. And so she showed up, and on this, in this one, she uh, went into the operating room and wouldn't leave. And the um, the doctors told her to leave, and everyone told her to leave. The the whatever they're called, the um, the aides, and she wouldn't listen. And so they aborted the procedure, canceled the surgery, kicked her out, and then they said, "We can't help you as a client anymore." So that's another example of hostage taking. You know, it's a situation where even even the uh, professionals were held. You know, we're held back because, of the, I mean, what are they going to do? Your kid's there. I mean, it just sucks. What you know, And they know that. They know your kid's there, and they use it. So, I mean, if anyone has any um, examples of these kinds of situations that have happened in their case, feel free to post it in the comments below. Um, if you have a double bind situation, you know, specifically mention, you know, it's a double bind and, you know, here's the situation where no matter what choice I took, I, it was negative. I, I was going to appear negative in court. If it's a, 
if it's the same thing with a hostage taking, you know, be specific about how they use the fact that your child was there to get what they wanted, you know. So um, with that, I'm, I'm going to end this video. I really feel like it's one of those topics that could go on and on and on and on if I just go into all these different examples. Hopefully I got the point across. Try not to just give in because you think that if you do what they want, it's going to stop, but it's not. If you do what they want, they're just going to keep doing it. And um, of course, if you don't challenge them, they're still going to keep doing it anyway. So um, there's, a, I mean, there's three options here. You, you do what they want. Basically, you give in, and they just keep on doing that because they see, hey, this works. I can manipulate and get what I want, and you're not going to stop me. That's, I mean, especially with personality disordered abusers, they'll see that as weakness. They'll see you being nice. Are they going to be nice back? Nope. They're going to see that. They're going to take. They're going to take as much as they can from you. The other option is um, that you stand your ground, but you don't bring it. You don't bring it to the court's attention. I mean, it's it's better than the first option, but it just it, the conflict is going to get higher and higher and higher, and it'll get out of control. So the best is the third option, and that's where you stand your ground and you bring it to the court's attention, because. Number one, you're asserting your rights, you're showing your child that you're going to be involved in their life, you're doing the best that you can for your child, and you're fighting the conflict by fighting it in court. So, I mean, if it's a violation of a custodial order, it's contempt of court. You know, I had my ex ordered, held in contempt of court and in prison for a day. If it's um, uh, an issue that's so severe that you can modify custody, modify custody. So, like, in my situation, she fought me two different examples I gave you on the surgery. Um, two different surgeries, two different examples of resistance that was above and beyond insane, you know, regarding severe tooth decay. And in that one, I was like, I'm not going to go for um, contempt of court. I'm going to go for primary physical custody. And, you know, there there it is. I stood my ground twice and I went to court. I got primary physical custody. And then going forward, she didn't get better. She kept on battling. She kept on causing conflicts at, at doctor's appointments, and I went ahead and got sole legal custody. So I, you just stand your ground and, and duke it out in court. Um, just stay consistent on it, and um, remember to watch all of the videos, especially the videos on modifying physical and legal custody, especially the video on uh, contempt of court, because sometimes you need to time the way you do go back to court. You do need to learn the court procedure, the court process, um, it does make you more effective rather than just um, rather than being so reactive that you look like you're flailing, flailing and you're filing all these different papers and they end up portraying you as a harassing or vexatious litigant that you um, you know understand when you have the evidence you need and when you can you know make a move what type of move you need to make so you, you it sucks because you can't just wing it so it's this it, it's, I know I say that you need to stand your ground and fight in court, but at the same time, I understand that for somebody who hasn't done it yet, it's scary because you're not quite sure how to do it. And anyway, basically, just remember what I just said. Um, keeping in mind everything I just covered in this video, please watch the modifying legal custody, modifying physical custody, and contempt of court videos because hopefully those will help you put together enough of an understanding that you know what to do without floundering in the court system. So with that, I'll go ahead and end this video.